Well, hello, and welcome to the Get Messy podcast. If you think this voice sounds a little different, you're probably correct, um, because my name is Jenna, and I am known as Jenna's Tonic on the internet um, and on Instagram, and I am interviewing Karen Price today at Get Messy Guard- Guardian as we're having some conversations about um, Get Messy. So Karen, will you say hi and introduce yourself? Well, hello, Jenna. And yes, you're correct. I am Karen Price and known on Instagram as Scrappy KLP. (laughs) Scrappy KLP. Uh, How long have you been with Get Messy? Um, Four years or so. Yeah. Four years or so. Okay. Um, well, you know, I've got a, I've got a series of questions here, so we will, we'll get into those and then, you know, I might ask some things just based on what you said, but, um, you know, we usually start out with just the big question. Why do you art journal? Why indeed. Okay. Well, (laughs) art journaling, uh, for me, it gives me the opportunity to play and Mm -hmm. be spontaneous. And it also helps me connect with my emotions So I just find it's a great creative outlet where there are no rules, no perfection, just expression. (laughs) So it allows me to change my gears, um, you know, from my workaday life. Um, It turns off my analytical mind and it allows me to just go with the flow and follow my intuition wherever that might take me. And I always find at the end of completing a spread or having it almost completed, it really jazzes me up and it recharges my batteries. So it's so many great benefits to art journaling. Um, So something you said resonated with me um, and you mentioned your analytical mind and how art journaling helps with that. Could you tell me a little bit more about that? I'm intrigued. Okay, well, um, my regular day-to-day business mind is Mm -hmm. It requires me to be analytical. So I have um, a job where I have to draft legal documents and the form of commercial lease documents. So it's quasi legal, but also you have to have a business mind about it and just know all the pieces that go into um, creating a premises for commercial Uh space. So all of those things um, come quite natural to me and I'm able to, you know, apply my analytical skills to that uh, very precise type of work. Yeah, it sounds very, very technical. Yes, it is. It is. So you've got to get it right. And you can't have, you know, any errors in it because it has huge ramifications Mm. because commercial leases usually go for um, a very long time. You can start Mm. with a five-year lease and you'd be amending or uh, doing you know, some kind of renewal document or an extension or some kind of an amendment that you're now in your 20th year. So if you Mm -hmm. get it wrong in the first lease, you know, draft, it carries on, it lives forever. And uh, so you just want to make sure that you're, you know, paying attention to all the details. So it's very detail oriented. Yes. So, and really, I mean, we talk about this a lot with Get Messy, but really perfectionistic. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. And that's a real (laughs) tough one to overcome because if I, um, and I mean, I'm I'm only human. So there are times when I screw up, you know, Um, (laughs) usually it is caught before the document is signed, but Mm -hmm. uh, when that happens, you know, it's very humbling and it's a hard (laughs) pill to swallow. So it's um, yeah, it's hard to leave that at the door when you come to do art. Yeah. So that actually leads well into our next question. So how do you live a creative life? Well, I just, um, I'm an empty nester. So my kids have flown the coop and they're both married. So I have a little more time available to me. And um, so I can intentionally set aside some time each day to be creative. And that usually involves something doing um, anything really with my hands, whether that's fussing, cutting, you know, images from a magazine, painting a background page, playing with watercolors or stencils, doing some stitching, whether it's slow stitching or on my machine, um, or even, you know, taking a, a long walk and being really sort of present in the walk, you know, listening yeah. to the birds and hearing the river flow and whatnot. So it's um, those type of things. I think if you just have the right mindset, you can get some creativity out of everyday life events. Is there anything in particular you 
do or things that help you do to make that shift from like your, your analytical day, that job that you do to kind of that creative shift? Um, no, I think I'm quite good about just, you know, when I leave my office, um, Mm -hmm. you know, just close the door on the office and I just can switch gears. I sometimes when I'm really worked up about, you know, a a deal, I might be, you know, having to breathe for a bit, maybe just take that walk first, um, before I can settle down. But normally I, I find that it's easy to switch gears. Once I go into my dedicated art room, I'm fine. Yeah. I'm asking a lot of these questions because I am a hundred percent an overthinker myself. So when you mentioned like the analytical mind thing, that definitely like piqued my interest because I was like, oh yes. And then I work in higher education. And so um, that's a part of like my day-to-day life. So um, I definitely zeroed in on that. Um, So then how do you define art journaling? Ah, well, I think um, first I'll just give you a little background info of where I came from. So please do. Yes. So I came into art journaling by the way of um, many a person's gateway drug, scrapbooking. Scrapbooking. (laughs) Yep. Yes. So, um, you know, with scrapbooking, I was, um, you know, looking at a lot of the design teams and how they do their work and everything. And it seems so very perfect, if you know what Mm -hmm. I mean. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and I also come from the background of, you know, dabbling with, um, and not that I'm a great, like, quilter, but I did dabble with quilting, like Mm -hmm. pieced quilting. And so getting those quarter inch, you know, seam allowance is perfect when you're doing, you know, triangles, squares, whatever. It was very Mm -hmm. important because if you didn't, it would all, your whole pattern would shift off and you wouldn't have a square or rectangle or whatever you're working. Okay. So um, what I loved, 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 what I discovered about that was I loved the selection of fabrics. I loved looking at the patterns, the colors, the sort of feeling that they gave me. And so I translated that into scrapbooking because now I had paper and I had no like seam allowance at all. So that was fabulous. (laughs) And so that gave me a certain freedom. But then I felt really constricted with, you know, um, trying to get my layouts to look as wonderful as everybody else's on the design teams. So, um, you know, I know that's a comparison thing and that's not a great thing to do, but that was where I I came from. Most of us do that. Yes. So art journaling really for me means total freedom. Yeah. I can, it's a creative outlet where I can just express how I'm feeling, what's going on in my relationships or what's going on in the world by using words and various mixed media art supplies and putting it on a page. And it's not on a canvas. It's in a book or in a little booklet that I make or in a repurposed book. And it's not precious that way. So you mentioned, cause it's not in the canvas. So for you, a canvas would be like more, more precious. It would be more pressure. Yeah. Pressure. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pressure on me because I would feel like, oh, now I have to do something really good. You know, um, definitely so mm-hmm. leaving it in a book makes me feel like it's more casual. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so then what do you, what are some of your biggest barriers to creating and what are maybe some ways you do to overcome them? Well, as I think you would probably appreciate, a busy mind. <laughs> so on those days where I've been, you know, highly, you know, analytical all day long and, and, yeah. and I just, it's sort of an exhaustion that comes over you when you have to really, uh, you know, work through issues. And um, I call it mental gymnastics. I often say that, like, of course you have like standard that. form documents that you have to use, but what? no deal is structured in a standard way so when you get creatively seen guys um and gals throwing their you know the tenants wants and because i usually work on the landlord side so the tenants wants and their needs and we're always very cooperative and trying to make it a win-win situation i have to often work outside the box and that um is what the area that I call mental gymnastics. So um, I enjoy it, but it does leave me at the end of the day feeling like, whew, now what, right? Like, yeah, so it kind of can be draining on your energy. So um, a busy mind ends up with me feeling like I don't have much left to give. So I'll, um, when I'm getting all sort of wound up in my own thoughts, that shuts down my creative flow. And that is what 
barrier is. So mm -hmm. in moments like this, I find it sometimes difficult to feel like going into my art room, feel like, you know, doing anything. So um, I will often avoid even walking down the stairs to that room because I just feel like, oh, what am I going to do when I get there? Um, yep. But then I just remember <laughs> that um, the feelings isn't what it's about. It's just about doing small little baby steps to get to this point where you feel like you are able to do something creative. And that could be just spending time tidying up my room, mm -hmm. um, you know, assembly putting groups of papers together that, you know, I'm not going to do anything with today, but you no, know, it'll come in handy tomorrow. Um, and so I just do little tasks that will help me feel like I've done something creative, but it doesn't have to necessarily result in a finished page. Yeah. 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 Um, I even like literally translate that into working really small sometimes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. So like take the babies, like literal, make it very small. Yeah. Um, so what then has been one of your biggest lessons when it comes to creating art? I think it is that there's no one right way to create art. It's an in individual in expression and there is no right or wrong. So many things in, you know, this analytical side of my world is black and white. And mm -hmm. so knowing that there's no one way to do it correctly is really freeing. And so I think that is the biggest lesson for me is that I don't have to be a Picasso. I don't have to be, um, you know, a realistic drawer. I'm not a very good drawer at all. And so <laughs> I, I just, and, and sometimes, you know, I think we get ideas about what an artist is and what that means. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, these, you know, concrete set of skills. And when you don't have that, then you can't surely call yourself an artist. Um, but that's all negative self-talk. And I try to shut that down <laughs> as much yeah. as I can. Yeah. So are you comfortable calling yourself an artist? Um, you know, I have great reinforcement. My husband often will say, yes, you're an artist, you're an artist, you're an artist. And I, <laughs> and I think that's, you know, here's something often enough, you know, you sort of start to believe it a bit. <laughs> yeah, so, definitely. Yeah. I think I have a skill set of, yeah. um, you know, combining colors and images and text and things like that. Um, but sometimes it is still hard to use that A word. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, it is. It's, it's amazing how hard it can be for such a, a simple little thing. Yes. Um, well, and, and so that actually, something you mentioned earlier that made me think of um, was like the right, the right and the wrong. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, it's funny because even after all of the, um, like all the stuff I've learned from Get Messy, there's still that battle of right and wrong, even with, even with sitting down to do art. And so, I mean, is that something you, do you have that battle that often, or do you feel like maybe it's happening less and less, um, or are you just like, I'm over it, I'm good? No, I'm definitely um, feeling like it's less and less. Um, okay. You know, sometimes I, I watch a tutorial and they'll, you know, have um, specific steps and sometimes I follow them exactly and sometimes I don't. Mm. And then I'm just like, you know what, doesn't matter. I don't have to make my piece look like that. So I just take, I think it's, a, again, back to the freedom thing. I think it's great yeah. that you can just pick and choose what things speak to you and then translate that into your own work. So then that's actually a good, what is the best art advice you've ever received? Ah, yes. That is that not to focus on the outcome, but instead it's the process that's important. So just getting your, you know, for me, it's, it's very tactile. So getting my hands doing something that is oh, yeah. creative is the process that I love the most. And it's the most beneficial to me. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, which, and it's funny because not to focus on something I've noticed, not to focus on like the product of the art itself, but sometimes the product of the end result, the feeling you have, like the satisfaction. Cause you mentioned that, like, I don't feel like I want to sit down. I don't feel like it. Cause I, yeah, I definitely encounter that a lot, but then, okay. My, um, my future self will thank my past self if I do this, cause I will feel better at the yes. end, no matter what. And um, it reminds, it oh, reminds me of, of, sorry. It reminds me of a song. Um, 
love is not a feeling, it's an act of your will. And so when you think about that, I mean, some, you know, oh, yeah. uh, it's, I'm writing that down. <laughs> yes. So if you can just change that, then like art is not a feeling, it's an act of your will. I think that's a real um, truth. And, you know, you have to be working at it all the time. It's not just going to come mm-hmm. to you because you wish it. It has to be something that you practice and having a daily practice is going to get you there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I love that. That's giving me so much to think about Karen. Cause I often think about, um, you know, the practice part more in terms of, oh, well, like discipline as opposed to, um, I like thinking of it as an act of love for yourself. Like yes. that's the practice, not yes. the, oh, I'm getting better at collage or something, but the practice yeah. is, um, the act of self-love. Oh yes. Yeah. And then, okay. All right. So um, then what is your go-to technique or tool? Well, you know, I've been thinking about that. um, And I find myself (laughs) gravitating mostly to collage type things. And I don't know Mm -hmm. if my definition of collage is what everybody else's is, but basically I will have a background already prepared or else I'll Mm -hmm. prepare a background. And then I just find some images and I play with text and I feel like, what is this person or this image saying? And, um, and often it will be related to how I'm feeling. So um, I will then place those down on a piece of, you know, paper and just have a play with that. So Mm -hmm. collage is definitely the easiest thing for me, I would say, I, I just, have dabbled in abstract, you know, painting and watercolors and things like that. But the good old collage, that's got it for me. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Do you find, um, and again, I'm going to keep revisiting this because I identify with it so much with you meant the analytical brain thing that you said, um, you mentioned, what is this kind of image telling me? And I find out my feelings that way. So Mm -hmm. When you go in, do you kind of know what you're feeling or is it through the process? Maybe you figure out what you're feeling or it, does it depend? It does depend and it can be both um, at different times. So yeah. I would say that I'm a very intuitive creator. I do mm-hmm. not have a set idea what I'm going to do when I start. Yeah. And I will, you know, paint a background, say I do a whole bunch of background pages and then I assemble my own, you know, art journal with those mm-hmm. pages, uh, the colors and Uh, whatever, you know, if it's text, if I use old books and stuff like that, it really doesn't come together. And like, I just start working on that background. And then I go look for the images, whether or not they match (laughs) is here or there. Uh, And but often they will. And and then I'm like, Oh, okay, well, that looks good on that background. Okay, let me let me go further. And then I look for other things. So yes, it's sometimes I will take whatever image I like, that I've Mm -hmm. cut out from a magazine or, you know, even a calendar or something like that. And I will sometimes I have a hard time figuring out like what that image might be saying. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sometimes it is obvious, but other times it's kind of like, I don't know. So then I'll often canvas my husband for his opinion. I go, if you just (laughs) saw this, what do you think about that? You know, like, what does that say to you? And and then he'll tell me. So often I, I will say there's probably a good third of my work where I've put the whole page together and mm-hmm. I don't have the quote ready until I sort of look at the finished product. And then sometimes I have to survey my husband and I'll say, well, I'm thinking of this for a quote or whatever. And, and he says, oh, well, that's interesting. I thought I would said this, you know? And so then I can spin off that. So we work off each other. That's, oh, that's really fun. Um, so is that kind of like for you, the final step of a page when you're like ready to call it done, you put words or a quote or something on it? Yes. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so what do you do when you don't like a page you've made? Well, I, um, I've not actually like destroyed it, although I've sometimes felt like it. I will either cover it up with other, you know, colors mm-hmm. of paint or something like that, or I'll just rip it up and use it as collage fodder. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, so have you ever been through artist block? If so, how do you overcome it? Yeah, I think <laughs> that we've all been there, right? And so it happens from time to time. And I don't know if it's artist block because of that a word again um but I would say that I would call that losing my mojo 
And so when that happens, I just give my, myself some permission to just take the time I need to get that mojo back. And um, sometimes, you know, that can be in the form of even not wanting to create, but that doesn't stop me then from scrolling on Instagram, looking for inspiration or yeah. watching a YouTube video, um, you know, with a process video or a get messy tutorial. Um, and sometimes depending on my frame of mind, I will just go, you know what, I'm just going to do a get messy recipe and we'll see where that takes me or the dice game or whatever. Yeah. And that kick will kind of kickstart something. Why? Yeah. I'm, I have the same way. I start seeing people creating and that can help me kind of get going to when I feel like, Oh, I don't, I don't really, or I don't have any ideas or something like that. Um, yeah. So what tips you have for beginners? Uh, just to start, like if you, anyone is interested, they should just start. Don't overthink it. And this is coming from me, the overthinker. <laughs> just go for it. Um, so I would highly recommend getting in touch with that kindergarten self, um, the person who was never self-conscious about, you know, just taking that crayon and going wild on the piece of paper. Um, and not having any fear of failure. You know, when you were a kid, you just did whatever you wanted and you would show it to your mom and they would, or your dad, and they'd be like, oh, wow, that's really great, mm -hmm. right? So it's, it's just sort of like tapping back into that kid-like wonder um, and then going for it. Just start slow, make some marks on a page and then build from there. Yeah, it's, it's, um. I've realized that too. That's often my advice is the just starting. Um, and I kind of find that, so this is a part of what I do in my day job um, is that gap between like a beginner and then the experts and all that are, or, and of course I'm like, I can't call myself an expert. It's kind of like the A word. Um, but uh, when you hit a certain point though, or you're pretty comfortable with it and people ask that, you're like, it really is just start. Like that's the hardest thing, um, yes. but it's also the most truthful thing. Um, that you just have to sit down and start. Um, so I, I found that funny because that was just the same same kind of thinking I have. Um, oh, so what do you do when you don't know what to make? Um, that kind of goes back to the other, you know, the question you, earlier, but, um, yeah. you know, doing small baby step things in, baby steps. in and around your, um, you know, creative area. Um, but for me, I often will fussy cut. Uh, mm -hmm. out images from a magazine or sometimes I'll doodle and I don't mean doodle people and objects but just doodle random like objects that kind of thing mm -hmm. like I, it's not it's just patterning really it's nothing mark like mark making yeah yeah, yeah. that's mm -hmm. what I find yeah and that just sort of uh, gives me an outlet for, for the mm -hmm. day but um I'm it's again not a finished product it just mm -hmm. it's just a step in the process. Yeah. Yeah. The, the baby steps to get, yeah. The catalyst to get you going. Yes. yes. So, and you kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but could you talk a little bit more about how you find time to make things? Yeah. Uh, I think it's very important to set a time uh, for yourself to have that uh, ability to go in, you know, explore your creativity. So setting aside a time and doing something creative daily is a priority that I set for myself. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to know your sweet spot when it comes to time of day. So for me, I find that um, that would be ideally in the morning or early afternoons when my energy level is really high. Because as I said earlier, if I've had a very busy day where I've just been you know, doing those mental gymnastics, then it just leaves me with little or no energy. And I find that's when I get up against the wall, you know, like I find it very difficult to create um, when I'm tired. So. Mm -hmm. um, so I just, I thought of this cause you know, of course the listeners can't see this, but I'm, I'm looking at you and yes. your, well, it's like your office space. Is, is office. Do you share the same with space? Is your office space the same as your art studio space? No, I have a no. dedicated room in, in our basement. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I know I'm very blessed. I'm very blessed to have that. I realize that. And I have projects often like in process, that yeah. I just leave out on my desk and, uh, and I know I can just pick up where I left off. So that was, yeah, yeah total bonus. 
Well, I mean, I asked that because, yeah, it used to be I had a, of course, with COVID, I'm now working from home and my right. office space at my desk, I share and I've got all my art supplies and they're just tempting me. And I'm just like, oh, I have to be working, but I've got these lovely art supplies over here. But it makes for a really fun time during Zoom meetings. Uh, I'm just on the doodle over here. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, um, Karen, that's like, that's all the questions I have. Do you have anything else that you would like to share with anybody interested in art journaling or any um, insights? Um, no, I don't think I have anything additional to add, but um, yeah. I definitely feel like, especially in these COVID-19 days, yeah, uh, you know, that it is important to have a hobby. I've think for most people, like if they're feeling trapped at home, this is a way for you to escape that feeling of um, being bound. I yeah. think it's really an awesome opportunity to explore your creative side. Mm -hmm. And maybe it wouldn't have had the time otherwise to have ex that time to explore. So right. I would really encourage people to, uh, yeah, give it a whirl. And it doesn't need to cost the world to just start art journaling. It really means picking up a pencil and having a piece of paper yep. and just getting started. So. Um, yeah. And just going back to that, that just start. Yeah. Always going back to the, you just have to sit down and start and stare at that blank page or half blank page and get going. Exactly. 